Ever wondered how you risk working your golf swing? Let me show you. A warm welcome back to the channel today. I wanted to talk to you about your wrists. Your wrists in the golf swing from start to finish. Hopefully this will give you a insight into what you need to be feeling, what you need to be looking out for. And of course, as ever, I don't know what you're doing and there are many, many variables that will affect the wrist angles during the golf swing. But if I can give you a bit of a guide as to what to look out for, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be able to get your golf ball navigated back to your flag stick. Let's talk about setup. Setup is an uh, important one when it comes to the grip and the wrist angles. Now, depending on how you stand to the golf ball and how you grip the golf club. Now, I want to talk firstly about the left hand because I've gone, about, gone on about the left hand quite uh, laboriously when it comes to its positioning and placement on the golf club. Do go check out my essential grip guide and I've got a playlist in there that will help you fix your grip and get it in a good orientation. The left hand is quite an interesting hand. Now, depending on where you position it on the golf club, if your grip was strong, you can see my knuckles could show all to the camera here. My grip could also be strong, show all my knuckles, and my left wrist here is in a very different orientation. Now, for me, I'm looking for a kink down through that left hand. The right hand sits on top, wants to cover the, the left hand, essentially. Now, I'm gonna use that as the start point, my grip as the start point. And the reason why I say that is because, let's just take the golf club back to a traditional left arm parallel shaft pointing up to the sky. Now, again, depending on how much you set the golf club will also depend on the orientation of the wrist angle. So if I have a grip uh, set up that you can see from face on there that we've got a decent kink, then when I go back, if I can still see that orientation, that kink that I've created at address there, my face angle will be square to the circle, shall we say, square to where it started. The minute you then start to change the angle of the wrist, so if the left hand starts to have more bow in it, this shape, back of the left hand pointing towards the camera, or if the left hand has more cup on it, the left hand pointing back at me, the more it points back at me, the more the club face relative to where it started will be more open. I change my wrist, point it away from me and back at you, I take it back to the start, the more the face will be closed. So this wrist angle has the effect of steering the, the car's front wheels. Depending on the shape of the left wrist will really dictate the orientation of the face during the swing. Now, if we go back and take that exact same left arm parallel to the floor, and then I, I keep that shaft pretty much parallel to where we started. So here we are at address. There's the club shaft parallel to that angle and pitch that we started at. If I make my left hand have that same shape as I did at the start, if I now take wrist angle away, or should I take, say, set away, the wrist now starts to look a little differently. If I now lay the shaft down, more horizontal, if I lay the shaft up, all of a sudden the wrist angle can start to look very different. This, therefore, the left wrist, and I've only referenced the left wrist because it's the top hand, it's the premium linkage, the premium point between the club shaft and my left arm. It's the top of the club. That's the one that's gonna have most impact on whether that face is pointing open or closed. So if you were to make some swings and you had your left hand in the right spot and you were having a good opportunity to try to make the wrist angles match during 
the full swing. Good old trap man. First one of the day, didn't pick it up. When we're making swings and you're aware of where the orientation of the face is, by the shape that you're creating in your wrist, the right hand will be a little bit more submissive. Because what a lot of people believe is, well, if I'm a right-handed golfer, why don't I just change and feel the wrist angle of the left hand through my right hand? And I think, you know, that, that, and that's, a, that's quite a viable idea, viable proposition. But I always believe that if you've got more of one hand on something, you're gonna have better sensation and more orientation, not necessarily more control, but you have more sensation of where that hand can be. The control element might come more from the right hand, but I do believe that your awareness of the shape of the left wrist is really quite important. So the right hand can often be the, the hand that starts to overpower the left hand if it's out of shape. So if I go back, I've got my grip in good shape, I then increase the cup in my left hand, and then I pull the club down in the same way as I did before. All of a sudden, without the right hand on, I feel more activity immediately. So the face now suddenly feels opened and closed because it's trying to square itself back up. Now I believe that if when you put your right hand on, there's more of an influence with the right hand trying to make up for the shortfall in the shape with the left wrist. So really I, what I've discussed there is your awareness of where the left hand needs to be at address. Take that as your marker. So if you're, if you're looking down at a left forearm and a left wrist that's very much in line, Nuts and bolts, you have to produce that similar shape back at strike. Now, of course, there is an element of shaftly. You know, we talk about setup. Now, depending on whether you set up with the handle in line with the golf ball, behind the golf ball, in front of the golf ball, will also set the shape of the wrist as well. So you have to be very aware of where you place the hand on the club to start with and where you place the shaft back at address as well, which all go up into making up the angle of the, of the left wrist. Because that shaft lean invariably should be a little bit more than you'd see at address, should be. If you're creating energy with the handle, and you're pulling the handle on the way down and on the way through. And someone said the other day, grip a golf ball and throw it to the, throw it to the floor and you get your body for free. You get your movement of your body for free. You get nothing for free. You might move, but you can't measure the energy that, that your body's moving at. So in the, in the pull phase, when I'm pulling on the golf club, because it's behind me, it's a pull, then it goes out in front of me, it's more of a push, it's more of a push. The reality is, if you're creating energy in the handle through strike, you're creating energy in the handle through strike, the club head will always have some form of lag behind if you're not trying to unload the head to square the face up to make up for a deficiency in grip or wrist angle. So understanding where you've started, which will dictate to you where the handle is, will dictate how you put your hands on, and then that first kind of checkpoint back here when your left arm is parallel to the floor, would be two spots that are most important to you. Because I believe by the time you've got up to the top, if you're starting to try to corrupt shapes of wrists up there, you're really going to be backing off power. You're really going to be changing that reactive pull dyna dynamic element in your golf swing. So for me, I would always look to whatever shape of wrist you've got in your left hand at address, wherever you are with the shape of the left hand 
at halfway back, I would then start to mirror these two sensations from set up to left arm parallel to the floor and then start to feel how you can keep that shape down through strike, whatever that shape might be. Now, if you've got a left hand that's weak and you can see from the face on camera here, my left arm and club shaft are all in line. And then when I go back here, I need to keep that left arm and club shaft all in one line, which means then when I come through and strike, I need to feel exactly the same sensation through contact as well. Didn't do it there, obviously. Blocked her out to the right. So it really gives you some insight into there is no fixed abode here when it comes to wrist angles. Everyone is different. When you're making the golf club swing back inside, it's changing the shape of your wrist angle. If you're picking the golf club up, it's changing the shape of the wrist angle. So as ever, the wrist angle is not symptomatic, but it is, an, it is a cog in the wheel of the gearbox of all of the different moving parts. So when you think about you know, making your setup and then you're thinking about flattening off your left wrist in an en endeavor to start to try to really hit a draw, what you might want to look at is other areas in your golf swing that you might be a little bit weak on because of how much you're trying to change the shape of your wrist angles to hit a draw. So if you're, if you're someone that's a fader and you've never changed your hold and you're looking to flatten your wrist here on takeaway, flatten your wrist up at the top in an effort to hit those beautiful draws down the fairway, what you might want to look at is, as I say, some other ingredients that will help you get the face back closed to path rather than just doctrinating this wrist angle to shut it down. And in the same way, if you are someone that's a massive hooker of the golf ball and all of a sudden you're really trying to work hard as much as you can on cupping the left wrist going back in an effort to take away the draw and to hit some fades, again, I would really start to look at the ingredients that might be causing the hook, just a wrist angle change invariably is a bit of a sticky patch on the movement to try to stop the draw. So in essence, your grip and your setup will give you a strong insight into what your grip and wrist angle should look like halfway back. So if you've got a nice strong cup in the left hand, left arm parallel to the floor, you should still see some of that cup in there so that when you come through and you strike it, the golf ball should come back relatively straight. If you make a backswing and you've got a weak left hand and you set, set the golf club, you should then for still have a bit of a bow, a bit of a flat wrist with your left arm that you would have seen present down at the strike, uh, set up in an effort to hit that straight. You can see that that, uh, that weak grip doesn't agree with me. Do take a look at setup. Do take a look at how you apply your hands on the golf club and do use that halfway back as a checkpoint of the shape of your wrist that will give you insight into what you might need to apply to get yourself matching up your setup and your half back swing. What goes on through strike, it's another matter. That's a whole new conversation of which I will bring that to you in the weeks to come. I think you'll find that's good coaching. Hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you next time.